Welcome and good day to all. For this week lecture is about the method selection, the basic where you will make a design requirements table and also you doing the uh, five step strategy for material selection. For this week lecture, we're going to go through the selection strategy, material indices, and the selection procedure from translating and deriving the index, screening, ranking, documentation. In the previous classes, we can link between design requirement with materials, shapes and processes. These elements influencing, influencing each other, such as the selection of material, will have a limited processing method to be used. In selecting materials, we need to identify the desired attribute profile based on the design requirements. Then, we need to compare this with those real engineering materials to find the best match. The first step in tackling selection is that of translation examining the design requirement to identify the constraint that they impose on material choice. Then we knock out the unrelated material by screening out the materials that cannot meet or cannot meet the constraints. At this level all materials that pass screening are potential candidate materials that can be used. Now you need to list out all the materials properties that are related and compare it side by side by ranking their ability to maximize performance. Here is the selection strategy by HB in 2005. There are four steps that you must grasp for material selections. Once you have done the selection of material, then you can proceed with process selection that will we will cover in the later chapter okay as you can see in figure 5.3 is an example for selection strategy for selecting family car this one is quite is, is exactly similar as the previous lecture from here since family car is desired the constraint will be mid-size family sedan Four doors using petrol and above 150 HP. In the US, the, they mention petrol as gasoline. The objective will be the low cost of the ownership of the car. And then from the constraint, all unsuitable car will be screened, remaining only the potential cars. In order to choose the best car, the information for all candidate cars will be listed including the cost of ownership okay and then each candidate car will be ranked according to their respective data either from 1 to 3 rating or 1 to 5 rating and so on the highest mark given to the candidate will be the best better selection however the critical factor which is the objective is lesser than the number rank 2 for example the rank 2 candidate can be selected based on the cost of ownership after choosing the best car then detailed document will be provided similarly in figure 5.4 okay you have the visor for helmet in case for material selection for helmet visor the constraint will be the transparent material and able to be molded into shape. Usually, the constraints are an obvious predetermined condition that cannot be changed at all. Obviously, who wants to wear a helmet with opaque visor like Luke Skywalker Blast Shield helmet? Okay. As for the objective for the visor, will be the visor need to be as tough as possible. As tough as possible means that you need to consider elastic modulus, strength and fracture toughness to achieve the objective. These properties can be added with multiplier such as times 3 or times 5 factor. Other properties such as optical, thermal and process co uh, compatibility will be related to the constraint. From the constraint, you will remove the non-compliant materials such as opaque, liquid state, brittle and so on. After screening, the remaining materials will be ranked accordingly, especially the modulus, 
strength and the fracture toughness properties. Then you will sum up all the points for each material provided that you will have at least three best material. You can also include the deciding factor for the selection such as price also. Eh? In the end, all products or all component in order to be produced need to be as cheap as possible. That is the common main sense for businessmen and also manufacturer. The first step for material selection will be the translation. The translation is very important to extract valuable information from the design requirement. Okay, this one is the design requirement, such as function, constraints, objective, and the free variables. For example, given the component for lower armbar is an undercarriage reinforcement part which helps to get the best performance that suspension can naturally offer. It bridges left and right suspension arms mounting points together so as to prevent suspension member from twisting. Thus, wheel alignment keeps straight. It also increases body stiffness because it is mounted at the frame part directly attached to the body. The high performance of lower arm bar need to be strong okay, and lightweight. So over here, the function of the lower arm is to prevent suspension member from twisting. In this case, the function. Eh? The constraints sometimes can be hidden, sometimes are clear cut in the statement. The obvious constraint from the statement will be the stiffness and strong. The hidden constraint will be the ability to be molded and also the objective is usually clear in the statement which is the lower the weight. Free variable will be also direct statement or indirect statement. In this case, the indirect statement is the statement which is the design which bridging between left and right suspension are mounting and also the choice of material. Here is the case study for office scissor. Okay, for, if you want to make a design requirement table, please follow the table template. Okay, please follow this table template for the design requirements table. And also please read the statement carefully. So probably in the exam or test there will be no highlighted word like this one and this one. Uh. Okay, so you have to read it out loud. Uh. Not out loud, I mean during the exam, means you need to read it clearly and then you need to have a proper understanding. So let me read it out loud for here. A material is required to manufacture office scissors. Paper is an abrasive material and scissors sometimes encounter hard obstacles like stapler. List function and constraint, which is set the objective to minimize cost and the free variables to choice of material. Okay. From the statement, the function will be obviously which is the which is to cut papers. The objective is to minimize cost. The free variable is the choice of material. The direct statement for constraints are abrasive and hard obstacles which is related to wear resistance and high hardness. The indirect or hidden constraints will be the toughness and able to be forged. Another example which is for the selection of material for a heat exchanger over here. Please tackle the function and objective first because it is very obvious. The function of this component is to transfer heat and the objective is to minimize cost. The free variable are the choice of materials which is direct statement and the, the design of the heat exchanger which is indirectly. 
the obvious constraints are thermal conductive, corrosion resistant, and okay, you need to remember that saline water is very corrosive towards metal, so corrosion resistance towards saline water, and high temperature and high temperature resistance and high strength. The hidden constraints are the erosion resistance and low galvanic potential effect. This erosion part came from the higher pressure, which is having high velocity fluid moving towards the heat exchanger. The heat exchanger design usually in form of tube bundle attached to a plate within the pressure vessel, in this case the shell. So you need to actually imagine this kind of uh, pressure vessel with the heat exchanger. But uh, later on, I will explain to you what is the design actually. The governing potential is actually actually related to the pressure vessel, often made from carbon steel or stainless steel. However, uh, thus the difference between the tube bundle and materials and the plate electron negativity will produce galvanic corrosion so one material is much more noble than the less than the other one so the lesser one will be corroded or oxidized directly this is the example for heat exchanger using heated saline water Okay, normally it doesn't matter what kind of water, what, what kind of fluid flowing from here to here. Okay, but it's actually if you have this kind of material, for example, saline water, it's heated from geothermal, so it moves into this flange towards the tube bundle. Okay, we have a plate over here which is holding the tube bundle. And then the the saline, the heated saline water will be moving towards over uh, towards the tube bundle and outside. Okay, and then this tube bundle will be inserted into the carbon steel shell. Usually, the the outer shell will be made from carbon steel, sometimes from stainless steel, but stainless steel is not suitable for saline water because uh, it will induce uh, chloride attack to the grain boundary of the uh, of the stainless steel so over here usually you put the tube bundle inside the uh, carbon steel shell and then the 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 either the heated gas or uh, the one the liquid that you want to heat it will go into this shell and then going out okay so usually for this material okay previously the material will be some uh, some kind of uh, brass uh, aluminum brass uh, that one that is suitable for the uh, for the saline solution solar or saline water okay the second strategy for metal selection is screening prior to the constraint Okay, prior to the constraints, all materials can be considered as candidates. The unwanted materials are then eliminated with extreme prejudice with using the constraint. Means that all material that doesn't fit or exceeding the limit will be knocked out immediately. Usually, the materials that cannot be used are exceeding the limit threshold. The, st the third strategy will be the ranking. The remaining materials will be ranked according to their respective properties. The properties that in line with the objective will be given multiplier. Okay, and then you can also use material index to indicate materials which having properties or property group that maximize group performance for a given design. Also, it can provide criteria of excellence that allow ranking of materials by their ability to perform well in the given application. So you can use the material indices are generally expressed so that the maximum value can be sought. This is example for ranking for helmet visor, but this one is the simple version. Okay, 
Here you have a list of material that complies with the constraints which are transparent and moldable. Since the objective is to have the highest toughness as possible, then the materials will be compared in terms of fracture toughness. Here obviously, the polycarbonate is the highest rank in fracture toughness is given the highest rating such as 5 out of 5. Huh? Of course, you can also rank it based on density, elastic modulus and many more. In the table, you can choose the best three candidate for documentation. The fourth strategy is documentation. Okay. This will help to narrow the shortlist to a final choice, it is differed greatly from the structure property data. It should be either descriptive or graphical or pictorial. For example, in case studies of previous uses of the materials, details of its corrosion behavior in, in, the, in particular environments, information of availability, pricing, experience of its environment impacts, and so on. And then don't forget the source of these documents are needed to be cited or referred, such as handbook. So handbooks, you can have uh, ASM metals handbook, for example. Also, material safety data sheet, MSDS or chemical safety data sheet, CSDS, can be used as the documentation. The website-based data source are also can be considered, such as uh, the website for HTTP, uh, www.medweb.com that one uh, very good website for uh, to find out the material properties for various kind of materials ranging from metals to ceramics polymer and so on here is the simple documentation for the helmet visor material the documentation for this material is describing about the applications of this material since all three materials has been used as goggles and protective screening. Okay, you can choose the polycarbonate as the final choice because of the higher fracture toughness. Okay, please let me know about your basic understanding of the current topic via ULEN or forum WhatsApp. Eh? For the basic of material selection, you can list out three things that you are very clear of, and then three things that you feel hazy about, and then three things that you need to have a further clarification. Some example for the ranking process over here. So a shaft is a rotating machine element which is used to transmit power from one part to another or from a machine which produces power to a machine which absorbs power. Okay, so over here the function of, of this shaft is to transmit power without failure means that this one is revolving twisting so you have to relate with the shear modulus and so on and also you need to have a very high stiffness materials and also probably you need to have a lightweight design okay and then also the design will be mostly like the variable so never mind that one so we go to the strategy three for the ranking we don't use the, the simple method such as in the for the helmet visor in the previous slide. So you need to employ the selection matrix. Okay. So this is the list of materials for the shaft after screening on these key requirements. Okay, 30 HRC, which is hard rock, well C hardness, high impact strength, a minimum fatigue strength, uh, at least three uh, thirty uh, kilo pound square inch high stiffness and low cost the candidates are uh, shown in the slide so you need to use the selection table selection matrix table for proper ranking here you have pre-hardened 4140 steel okay and then you have base hardened 1020 steel you have 174 ph stainless steel titanium uh, aluminium vanadium alloys and then you have uh, T6 aluminium 6000 series and also yellow brass C36000
As shown in table 1, this is the selection matrix table for all candidate materials. You can list down the materials properties as per contents of an objective. Uh, the objective is to have high stiffness, so the elastic modulus will have the multiplier three times factor. You can also add up other properties such as rust proof, okay, then material cost, machining, treatment, and lifetime. Okay, usually we use uh, the term lifetime. So this added this property will be added value uh, so that the selection will be the as accurate as possible. From the selection matrix table, we can rate the materials according to its properties value. Note that the rating value range in this case is between 1 to 0 or uh, 1 to 10 or 0 to 10. In the hardness, some value shows in kilogram per millimeter square and some value shows in hardness Rockwell C, which is the HRC. So you will need hardness conversion table. If you set the maximum value 30 HRC as rating 10, then half of the value will be rated as 5. Similarly, in the endurance limit, you can set the highest value of 45 kilopound square inch as 10 and then to rate 20 for in order for you to rate 20 ks1 uh, ksi you can divide 20 by 45 and then times 10 then you can get 4.4 okay so these are the value for the ranking for endurance limit as for the elastic modulus it has Multiplier times 3 factor since stiffness is the critical factor. Since, it, since it is measurable value, you can directly calculate the rating value using maximum elastic modulus as 10, which is the highest. Okay, so this one is uh, 30 million. Okay, 30 million value. However, in the rust properties, rust proof properties. A subjective sentence is shown over here just only tarnish not rust in the uh, room air and will rust in room air okay so you need to rate it accordingly yeah. although you can measure corrosion rate in the air okay you can measure corrosion rate of material in air in normal atmospheric condition you need a significantly long time to measure it in unit micrometer per year Please note that the actual value for the elastic modulus is in pound square inch PSI. Eh? So probably you can get, get quite confused uh, what is the unit for the elastic modulus. So you for the SI unit will be in either gigapascal or megapascal. So here you can use the imperial which is in PSI. As for the cost of material, the lowest is the best rank. Thus, you can set $1 per pound as rate 10. Okay, rate 10. So, usually you can uh, see this one in the uh, CES Edupack software or the latest version, which is the. I'm not sure the. Uh, later on, you can search in the internet for the software. Also, you can search uh, in the. Google, you can Google it anyway for the price for. Each materials so the rest is rate accordingly so you can set the maximum acceptable prices maximum acceptable price for more accurate rating for example the maximum price that you are willing to use would be like $30 per pound for example and then you can compare it uh, with uh, the best one uh. the treatment machining cost is only by judgment Okay, you can read it accordingly. However, in actual business or actual manufacturer, okay, you can calculate the cost of treatment or machining by using machine power consumption, consumable cost per batch, manpower, and the machine cost. So the in the software, I think the 
the you can see the the value of the machining and so on per batch uh, you can see it in the tier 3 database the surface life of the material is purely based on judgment but nevertheless the the surface life can be calculated based on the corrosion rate and cyclic fatigue that's at fixed environment and cyclic load so usually materials are designed to last at least more than five years huh? so it depends on the service condition for example if you use carbon steel in uh, in fresh water for example it will last longer than the uh, carbon steel used in the sea water finally when you get all the rating or rank values you sum up sum it up as in this table 2 the total rating for each material represents the material performance against the constraints and the objective here you will have top 3 materials over here top 3 materials okay number 1 2 3 okay top 3 materials as candidate for the shaft which is the stainless steel 17 4 carbon and then the carbon steel 10 0 20 and also pre hardened steel 4140 the fifth step is to select the best match and to specify or to justify it the best will be the highest numerical rating you also need to specify the winning material or material plus coating or treatment a proper purchasing document specification should be included a globally this uh, recognized material generation the manufacturer process manufacturing process and applicable standards the surface texture coating surface and heat treatment and so on from the table, you can see that the pre-hardened carbon steel 4140 has the highest rating. However, if we consider the lower corrosion resistance and the additional cost on heat treatment and plating on the of the 4140 carbon steel, the stainless steel 17.4 pH is the better deal. So you can choose the second rank or the third rank based on the justification. So here we repeat back the uh, helmet visor material selection. In this case is much more detailed. So you can have a, uh, a long statement about the helmet visor. So over here, a uh, motorcycle helmet is a type of helmet used by motorcycle riders. The primary goal of a motorcycle helmet is motorcycle safety, which is to protect the rider's head during impact, thus preventing or reducing head injury or saving the rider's life. Some helmets provide additional convenience such as protective visor of a safety helmet. This part will provide maximum facial protection, which at the same time will allow clear vision. Then to protect the face from the front, from the sides, and from below, it must be the double curve, double curve, requiring that the material can be molded. Moreover, if the visor is used to protect the face from damage, the visor must be as shatterproof as possible. So note this red color keywords over here. So impact means that you need to have uh, impact chappy test or impact value. Okay, impact test value. And then you have to go for the protective visor. Okay, so protective visor, which is the function, which is the uh, facial protection. And then the other word will be the clear vision, means that the material need to be transparent. Double curve, which is material can be mold. Shatterproof, that means the material have elastic model, uh, elastic uh, properties. Uh, and then stiff enough, but do not, uh, not brittle as glass. 
based on the scenario in the previous slide, you can summarize all the design requirement of the helmet visor that need to be achieved. Given the list of candidates material in table 1, identify three materials which are possible to be manufactured as helmet visor. Also, you need to provide this justification to your elimination of the candidates. So, you need to refer to the appendix one for data of each materials. So, the table one, which is the material that can be considered to make a helmet visor. Here, you have polycarbonate, polymetal, metal acrylate, PMMA, cellulose acetate, soda lime glass, and polypropylene. So, based on the variable candidates selected above, you can construct a selection matrix to identify the best candidate taking only three most important criteria for consideration. Also, you need to provide the justification to your selection of material after the ranking process. Here, the selection, uh, selection matrix table for the helmet visor. So, you have the price is in RM per kilogram, density, okay, kilogram per meter cubic, hardness, which in this case is uh, hardness vicus, and then tensile strength, okay, in megapascal, and then you have the fracture toughness value over here, and then compressive strength, okay, for impact. And then also you have the transparency properties, like the, the surface is uh, transparent or translucent or opaque. Opaque, the light doesn't go through. Transparent, uh, almost 100% go through. And then translucent, half-half lah, like that. And then refractive index, okay. And then also the moldability. And also cast stability. So remember, this rating is based on the soft, either from the software or based on the HB book. So you have the first one is the soda lime glass, which is the most cheapest. Okay, and then it has the highest density, which is quite heavy. Hardness is very hard, above 400 HB, more than metal. And then tensile strength, which is intermediate, and the fracture toughness, and so on. Fracture toughness is quite low because this one is brittle. Compressive strength, okay, above 360 megapascal. So this one, transparency is optical quality, means almost 100% trans, uh, transparent. Refractive index between 1.5 to 1.52. So, it doesn't reflect very much. Okay. And then, moldability 5 means that this one is a good uh, material to be mold. And then, castability. Easy to be produced. So, the next is polymetal. Uh, sorry. Next is PMMA. And cellulose acetate, polycarbonate and so on. So, based on this material, you can actually knock out the the obvious one, for example, for polypropylene, translucent, okay, so once a blur hel helmet visor, no, and then you can knock out the soda lime glass, which having the brittle effect over here, probably uh, immediately after impact, the visor will be shattered, and then the remaining will be the most suitable material to be used for the helmet visor. Of course, you have to do ranking. Ah. Now, actually, this one comes first before you make the table. Okay, For the design requirement for the helmet visor, the function is for the actually, helmet visor, but actually to pro, uh, as a protective screen. Then the constraint will be the transparent, KAB to be mold, and then as tough as possible, which is from uh, shatterproof. So the objective is to make, uh, maximize the fracture toughness and then the free variable will be the choice of material. So usually the free variable is the choice of material or design. 
So that one is uh, mostly the free variable. Others objective will be uh, quite precise lah. Function, uh, constraint sometimes can be indirectly, sometimes can be direct statement. So from the table one, identify three materials which are possible to be manufactured as helmet visor. Over here, such as mentioned before, you can knock out the soda lime glass and then polypropylene. Okay, so you need to provide your justification and then you need to refer the appendix one for the data for each material. So the data for each material in the in the table one. Okay, for example, the the answer for this justification for the materials that you can use, for example, polycarbonate, you can comment it as transparent, good mobility, and has a good fracture toughness. PMMA also have similar properties such as uh, like polycarbonate, cellulose acetate uh, is having transparent and then moderate modability okay because the cellulose acetate is quite soft i think and then you have a good fracture toughness so the lime glass transparent good modability but low fracture toughness which is brittle and then you have polypropylene which is translucent material completely knockout so as per this table, table one, which is the material properties of selected materials. So in terms of transparency, uh, you just list out these three materials, which I already mentioned, polycarbonate, PMMA, and cellulose acetate. Then you can compare these three materials in terms of fracture toughness, okay? Fracture toughness and also moldability. Also, you can rate it, by the way. Eh? So, to rank this material, these three material, you can rank it based on the properties listed in the table one, which is the transparency, fracture toughness, and mobility. And then you can sum up all the uh, points given or the rating given. Huh? For example, the polycarbonate has uh, optical quality transparency. Okay, and then you have the fracture toughness, which is quite high, and then the moldability. So can get this one is 30 marks okay 30 points and then for the pmma the fracture toughness is lesser much much lesser than the polycarbonate so you can get it uh, rated as 3.4 so the total sum up will be 23.4 as for the cellulose acetate the moldability and the fracture toughness is lesser than the polycarbonate okay so you have the lower score which is 22.9 so based on this one obviously you can go for this one Material one as the uh, choice okay, as the best selection for the helmet visor. Okay, that's all for now. Later on, we'll be discussing on how uh, we use the material indices and also the ranking candidates and so on for the material selection. Okay, thank you very much.